Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Welcome to the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. My name is DJ, and I want to talk about Alila Artful Provocateur. Alila is one white, blue, black for a 2 3 legendary fairy warlock. She has flying and death touch and lifelink. Other creatures you control with flying get plus one plus zero. And whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a 1 1 blue fairy creature token with flying. Alila has so much going on. In fact, there's too many directions to go in building this deck. Let's take a look at the different ways we can build Alila. I think the first thing that screams out at us is fairies. We're in the right color combination. Alila is a fairy, she makes fairies, and she buffs fairies. Yeah, that's a pretty good combination for a fairy tribal general. So that's something you might want to keep in the back of your mind. The next thing that we could be is a flying deck. Alila doesn't just pump fairies, she pumps all flying creatures and creates flying creatures. So we could make an Esper Flyers list that could be really cool. Now also we have to keep in the back of our mind that we only get this fairy token creation payoff when we cast artifact or enchantment spells. This could be an Esper Enchantress deck, very cool, or an Esper Artifacts deck. Or honestly, we might just want to mix and match. And that's one of the tricky things is that when you do mix and match, you have to make sure you don't, um, how do you say, convolute your strategy, like have everything get in the way of one another. And so we're going to pay close attention to that as we explore the different categories. First up, we have fairies. So the old school fairy general has got to be Una, Queen of the Fae. And Una can fit right in here because she too creates fairies and puts them on the battlefield. But we also have Bitter Blossom, an enchantment so that'll create a fairy and give you fairies every turn. We also have a few really awesome tribal synergies like Scion of Una, which has flash flying, pumps all your fairies, and gives them all Shroud. Shroud is a really, really intense ability that can be very powerful. But by far, my favorite fairy synergy has got to be the Prowl mechanic. Prowl on this latchkey fairy reads, two and a blue, you may cast this for its prowl cost if you dealt damage to a player this turn with a fairy or rogue. If we're going to be going wide with fairies with our commander, Prowl's going to be pretty easy to trigger. So let's look at the advantages of Prowl on this card. When latchkey fairy enters the battlefield, if its prowl cost was paid, draw a card. So now we're looking at two and a blue for a 3-1 flyer that draws you a card, man, that is a serious bonus. And it even gets better. <laughs> Notorious Throng and Knowledge Exploitation are seriously good cards when you pay their prowl cost. Let's look at Notorious Throng first. Uh, put X 1-1 one, one Black Fairy Rogue Creature Tokens with flying into play, where X is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of tokens. Okay. If Notorious Throng's Prowl cost was paid, take an extra turn after this one. Oh my gosh, you immediately get to then use all of those fairies. And remember, with all the token generation we have here, this will be a deck that can get damage through. Finally, Knowledge Exploitation is a very expensive spell, 5 blue blue, but its Prowl cost is only 3 in a blue. Search target opponent's library for an instant or sorcery card. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. Then that player shuffles his or her library. Oh ho ho! Oh, this is an awesome bribery for instants and sorceries. These are some of the most powerful spells in our format. And just imagine if you can go in and hit a time stretch and expropriate out of your opponent's library just for four mana. These kinds of unique effects really draw me to the fairy archetype. But let's move on to flyers because it doesn't just have to be about fairies. I've done a flying tribal deck. It's the Asperia Supreme Judge. I'll have a link in the description if you want to read about that $40 budget commander deck. And so this too could be another budget commander that creates tons of flyers and really embraces that strategy. Some of the cards that really went well in that deck and go well in this one too could be cards like Gravitational Shift or Favorable Winds. These pump your flyers. Gravitational shift, man, is so backbreaking. Creatures with flying get plus two plus so, and creatures without flying get minus two minus so. Oh, it's so gross. Um, except, uh, hopefully, you're not playing against an opponent's deck that has flying creatures, because this is like universal. 
It's a little dangerous there. This is a really fun deck that can be super budget. We've recently got some new inclusions to support the flying archetype. Empyrean Eagle pumps your entire team. Sephira Sky's Blade can just be a single mana in these types of deck and then be this, well, 7-7 seven, seven flying lifelink, indestructible granting amazing angel. Just insane. And then Sarah the Benevolent is more cute, maybe not worth her price tag, but she'll create flyers and then pump your flying team. All right, let's move on to enchantments. So sometimes we have token production decks that go on spell slinger strategies like Kaikar or Tilerand and stuff like that. And so you feel like you kind of have to shoot off spells into nowhere to generate your creatures, okay? And these decks can work really well. One thing that's really good about this deck specifically is that enchantments can just be on the battlefield and affect the game, and you can kind of employ them whenever you need to. Like Aura of Silence, for example. This comes down, automatically impacts the game, and then you can kind of cash it in later. And so you don't have to think about, well, if I have this instant or sorcery that destroys an enchantment or artifact, do I have to shoot this off to then get my spirit token or my bird token or my wizard token or whatever? No, instead you can just have it hit the battlefield and sort of impact the board. Same thing can go with like Doomwake Giant or Estrid's Invocation is like my favorite. <laughs> this is the reason to go into Enchantress because it is so good at copying enchantments over and over again. And again, it's one of those things where you can put it down and it can come and become anything that you want to. So I really think the Enchantress strategy is quite, quite flexible, even though we are losing a pretty big part of that equation and that's the color green. Okay, green is so good in Enchantress, and there's a lot of really good green cards, and we are losing out on some of it. I think the biggest thing that people think we're losing out on are these Enchantresses. I'm going to put Enchantress's Presence right here, so you can see an Enchantress effect. And that's when you cast an enchantment spell, you draw a card. And these decks can be very good. You stack a few of these, and suddenly a little enchantment doesn't just generate you a 1-1 flying fairy, but instead draws you several cards and does so much. But one thing that's really great is that blue, black, and white, well, they all have really solid forms of card advantage and play really well with enchantments on their own. Finally, there's some really, really strong enchantments that work really well with our commander. Remember, whenever we cast an enchantment spell, we're going to create a 1-1 one, one fairy with flying, okay? So we're going to want to support this flying token archetype, and so a card like Sacred Mesa is very, very good. What's also better, though, than... Pegasus and fairies are turning them into angels with divine visitation or making them huge with Cathar's Crusade. Cathar's Crusade just kind of goes crazy because suddenly three or four little dinky enchantments make your team into this huge massive force that really really needs to be reckoned with. So I can see enchantments starting off as sort of controlling and then kind of bursting forth by creating a huge army out of nowhere. Next, we have artifacts. One of the great things about this commander and artifacts is that we will want artifacts in the form of our mana ramp. And so whenever we play our mana ramp and we get a payoff, that's pretty, pretty good. Okay. Um, and one other thing about the artifact synergy is that we have cards like Efficient Construction, Mirrodin Besieged, Psy Master Thopterist. All of these will give us this benefit whenever we play an artifact, and it's super good. These cards are great. But the problem is that when you have too many of them, notice none of these are artifacts. None of them will trigger the other. But with our commander, Efficient Construction and Mirrodin Besieged will at least trigger our commander producing more and more tokens. Of course, there's lots of artifacts that create really awesome thopters out there. Hangerback Walker, Sharding Sphinx, uh, but Sharding Sphinx doesn't exactly synergize with all the fairies that you create, but it does synergize with all these other thopters, and those are flyers. And so there is some overlap here with how many artifacts synergize with your commander and how your fairies synergize with your artifacts. Okay. Ultimately, they're all flyers and those can synergize well together, and they're all 1-1s, so we could always have them work with Sword of the Meek. 
Particularly, I'm a fan of the Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek combo. Basically, with this, you can pay one, sacrifice the Sword of the Meek to create a Thopter, and then immediately the Sword of the Meek comes back out of the graveyard and attaches to that Thopter, and it creates, well, a crazy cycle that almost gets out of control in these kinds of decks. You can also just win the game out of nowhere with a card like Time Sieve, which can give you tons of extra turns with the amount of artifacts that we're going to be creating or something like mechanized production, creating tons and tons of artifacts. And then that can feed into our commander. Our commander can sort of buff all of our flying artifacts, but you might notice less overlap here than in some of the other categories. But artifacts are distinctly powerful, so some of you might be leaning towards the artifact strategy because they're uh, pretty good. All right, before we get into the most powerful build of this deck, I want to take a quick second to remind you that I'm running a Kickstarter for the best playmat you have ever seen. That's a little bit of hyperbole, but it's very, very good. So head on over to my Kickstarter and you can get this limited time playmat. There's only 10 days left in the Kickstarter and we are only doing a single printing of this playmat. So get it if you want it now because it's not coming back. All right, thank you so much for everyone that's bought one and everyone that supports me. Let's get into one of the more competitive versions of this deck, and it's based around a vintage deck. And that vintage deck is based around a paradoxical outcome. All right, the theme of this deck is to be able to dump your hand with all of your artifacts and all your fast mana onto the battlefield, then take them all back again, and then put them all down again, and then essentially you kind of storm out from there. You just create a bunch of different spell triggers. And this honestly matches with our commander's strategy pretty well, because we do want to be casting a lot of tiny, tiny artifacts to create a monstrous mob of fairies that can overwhelm our opponent. Paradoxal Outcome is at the core of this deck because you can return any number of target non-land, non-token, that makes me very sad to hear, but okay, <laughs> permanence you control to their owner's hands, and then draw a card for each card returned to your hand this way. All right, this is solid. You can just return a bunch of your mana rocks to your hand and then redeploy them, oftentimes being mana positive while you do it. You can also use cards like Rebuild or Retract to simulate Paradoxical Outcome and generate your storm and generate your mana. Of course, you're going to need a critical mass of artifacts, specifically zero mana artifacts, Urza's Bauble, Mishra's Bauble, Welding Jar, Mox Diamond, Mana Crypt, Mox Opal, even um, some of the one-drop ones like Mana Vault and Soul Ring can be really, really good. Okay, notice there's a lot of money on this page right now. You're looking at Mox Opal, Mox Diamond, Mana Crypt. Yeah, that's a lot. And you really do need these kinds of cards to be able to storm off. Now, you don't have to just go off in one turn. You can use slower mana, and this can be sort of a slower deck. But then you lose some of your speed and your competitive edge, but that's okay. Uh, this deck is also revolved around Bolas' Sigil and its ability to sort of gain tons of card advantage as it churns through your deck. We can create something similar with Bolas' Citadel, Mystic Forge, or Future Sight. Uh, specifically, we can also rely on a card like Sensei's Divining Top to be able to play it over and over and over and over again, casting it from the top of our library and then putting it back on top with its tap ability. And if we have our commander on the battlefield and suddenly we're creating two one fairies every single time. And with all of those casts and all of this stuff, all of the tutors that we have at our disposal, everything that we're doing, all we really need to do is drop an Aetherflux Reservoir suddenly play a couple more spells, and we've played so many during that turn, we'll just gain huge amounts of life, shoot the board down, and then suddenly we've won the game. No need for tendrils here. Okay, so some of the fun parts about this deck. Um, it's really, really fun. Especially, I love Bolus the Citadel, Mystic Forge, and Future Sight. Those give me so much value, but this really is, at its heart, a storm deck, which means that you're going to be kind of playing goldfish on your side of the board, and everyone else is just going to have to sit there and wait for you to do your thing. And um, you can whiff, so they kind of have to have you wait a little bit. Also, uh, if you just play Brea Ethereum Shaper instead, you might have a little bit more outs to be able to combo off with her instead of your commander because she does have a damage to target player built into her and access to red. So this might not be the best choice, but 
I did want to throw it out there because I am planning on using some of this version of the deck in my own because I want to combine all of these strategies together. And I mentioned earlier that this could be problematic, and it could. But what I want to do is make sure that all of my fairy tokens that I create, and I'm going to be creating them all the time, are powerful. Gravitational Shift, Throne of the God Pharaoh, Heraldric Banner, all of these can pump the power and the damage dealing potential of my fairies. But I'm not going to be reliant on my commander only. I'm going to use enchantments to further bolster my flying squadron of army. Birder Blossom, Sacred Mesa, Luminarch's Ascension, all of these come down relatively early and create massive amounts of flyers. Of course, I'm going to be using Notorious Throng to create even more flyers and maybe close out the game. But I'm going to need some forward momentum, some card draw on this deck, and so Coastal Piracy and Biden of Thassa, not only will they create fairies for me, but they will give me tons and tons of card draw. Of course, I'm going to access some of the most competitive deck, and so I'm going to use cards like Bolus' Citadel and Future Sight, maybe Mystic Forge, depending on my artifact count, I'm not sure, but cards that manipulate the top of my library, like Sensei's Divining Top, to really churn through my deck and gain a lot, a lot of value. And then finally, I'm going to leverage these spirit tokens. I'm going to use Attrition to take out my opponent's creatures, Blind Obedience to slowly tax my opponents out and slow them down so that my fairies can get in for more damage, and Painful Quandary and other mean black enchantments because I really like them. In fact, I kind of really like mean black enchantments. What if I were to include a card like Contamination? During my upkeep, I sacrifice a creature um, or sacrifice Contamination, but if I have Bitter Blossom and Sacred Mesa and my commander, then maybe I could just make everything be a swamp for the rest of the game. Or, I mean, Smokestack, if I'm creating a bunch of tokens, I could just Smokestack people out of the game. Or, you know, I don't really have a lot of creatures that are entering the battlefield or any activated abilities for that matter, all my stuff are enchantments. So I could play artifacts that create fairies like Cursed Totem or Torpor Orb that shut down my opponents. I can even play Humility and my 1-1 flyers just become 1-1s that can tangle with any Elish Nord across the battlefield. Oh my gosh, I've created a stack deck. So sometimes when there's too many options, you just got to focus in on what you want. And I think I'm going to come up with a very, very fun deck. And hopefully one of these different strategies has inspired you. I love this commander because there are so many different ways to build it. And you might get lost if you go onto the internet and try to figure out your particular way because everyone's going to be going in so many different directions. So hopefully you take this as a jumping off point to find your own way to build a Leela Artful Provocateur. I want to thank you so much for watching this video, but I also want to thank Cool Stuff Inc. because they sponsor the entire Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. Do you want to buy a Leela Artful Provocateur or some of these cards? Click on the link in the description and that'll take you over to Cool Stuff Inc. where if you use the coupon code JUMBO5, you can get 5% off your order. Oh my gosh, thank you Cool Stuff Inc. And thank you to everyone else that supports me. If you're buying my playmat on Kickstarter, or if you're just liking this video or subscribing to it, I am super thankful, especially to my patrons. Thank you, patrons, so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day playing with all the awesome Eldraine cards out there. I'll see you all really soon. Bye-bye.